In this video, I want to talk a little bit about how much ATP we get from breaking down one glucose molecule. If we're going to break down a glucose molecule, how much ATP will we get or how much energy will we get? If we break down one glucose molecule, we're going to start off with glycolysis. And if you recall, glycolysis breaks glucose down into three different, and, and we get three different products. Um, we break the actual glucose, the six carbon molecule, into two three carbon pyruvates. We also net two ATP. We invest two, we make four, so the net of two ATP. And we make two NADHs for every one glucose because the uh, every, each we get one NADH from each glyceraldehyde three phosphate, but since there are two of them, um, we make two NADHs. Uh, if any of that is unclear, go back and watch the glycolysis videos. Now, NADH and ATP will, will, are basically valued at a particular amount of, of energy. This pyruvate, though, can be further broken down. So pyruvate, where does pyruvate go? Assuming we have, assuming an oxidative, or um, if an oxygen-rich environment, right? If we have oxygen available, it'll go through aerobic respiration. So this is, if, if there's oxygen available, pyruvate will go to the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex to prepare for the Krebs cycle. Now, each pyruvate in the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is converted to an acetyl-CoA. So one pyruvate turns into one acetyl-CoA. And in that reaction, we create one NADH. So how many would we get for each glucose? Well, if we have, for each pyruvate, we're getting one. There are two pyruvates that are coming from one glucose molecule. So we would just double those numbers. We would get two acetyl-CoAs and two NADHs from the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Now, what happens now this NADH, right, or these NADHs here are valued, right? They have a particular energy value. But this acetyl CoA can go through the Krebs cycle, so it can be further broken down. So these acetyl CoAs go to the Krebs cycle. For each acetyl CoA, we create um, a given number of NADHs, FADH2, then a GTP. If you recall, there's one step in which we create a GTP. So for each acetyl CoA that goes through the the um, Krebs cycle, we get one GTP. There's also only one reaction that creates an FADH2. How many reactions that are actually within the Krebs cycle create NADH? There are actually three of them. So that's for each acetyl-CoA that goes through the Krebs cycle. But what about for each glucose? Well, again, if, if each glucose broke down into two pyruvates, and those two pyruvates, each one gives you one acetyl-CoAs, that means you have two acetyl-CoAs. So two acetyl-CoAs, you would just double all these numbers. For each glucose, you would get six NADHs from the Krebs cycle, two FADH2s, and two GTPs. So now, we're going to calculate um, how much we, energy we get from one glucose molecule. Um, so, uh, how many NADHs do we get from the Krebs cycle and the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex? We have two NADHs here and six NADHs here, so that's actually going to be eight NADHs. You'll notice that I wrote NADH twice, and I'll get to that in just a second. How many FADHs do we have? Two. How many GTPs? Two. Now, glycolysis, we had two ATPs, and we had two NADHs. You might be wondering why I wrote two NADHs, um, these two NADHs separately. And this is very, very important, because glycolysis occurs in the cytosol, while these two pathways both occur in the mitochondrial matrix. Okay, now when these NADHs are, are created in the mitochondrial matrix, they can go straight to the um, to the electron transport chain, which is which happens along the inner membrane of the mitochondria. If I drew it out like this, right, the ETC is along this membrane. Okay, the electron transport chain, which we'll talk about in the future videos. But any of the NADHs that are made in here, in the mitochondrial matrix, they can go straight to the electron transport chain because the membrane is right there. But NADHs that are made out, out in the cell, in the cytosol, I drew that really, really big mitochondrion. But if these NADHs, right, are made in the cytoplasm of the cytosol, so these NADHs, when they're made, the NADH, these NADHs cannot cross these membranes. Okay, they cannot cross and get into the mitochondrial membrane. So the way they get in to the to the the way they get their value into the mitochondria is they have to under they have to go in through a shuttle mechanism. So there are actually two different shuttle mechanisms. So um, 
I'll explain that in a further video actually or right. but uh, for now let's just do the energy calculation so all these NADHs that were made in the PDH or the Krebs cycle they're going to be worth 2.5 ATP okay, so 2.5 ATP these FADH2s each is going to be worth 1.5 ATP GTPs are going to be worth 1 ATP and ATPs, of course, are worth each are worth one ATP. These NADHs from glycolysis. Okay, let me actually write that here so I can note that. So these are coming from glycolysis, and these are coming from the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and the Krebs cycle. These ones from glycolysis they can be worth 2.5 or 1.5, depending on which shuttle mechanism they enter the mitochondria by. Okay. So this or here, this or is I'll write over here based on which shuttle mechanism is used to transport NADH's value into the mitochondrion. Okay, so if it was, I'll actually just mention them here. The malate aspartate shuttle would cause it to be worth 2.5 ATP, and the glycerol phosphate shuttle would cause it to be worth 1.5 ATP. I'll talk more about this in another video. But let's just do the calculation for now. So 2 times 1.5 would be 3. 2 times 2.5 would be um, 5. So that would be either 3.5 ATP from those, for those uh, NADHs there. This 8 times 2.5, that will actually be 20. <coughs> Excuse me. These two FADH2s, each one's worth 1 1.5, so that's 3 ATP. The GTPs, there's two of them, and the ATPs, there's two of those. So if you total this up, 2, 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7, 27. 27 plus 3 is 30, so we either have 30 or 32 ATP from one glucose molecule. Okay, so 30, if, we, if those NADHs go into the glycerol phosphate shuttle, 32 if they go in through the melee aspartate shuttle and again I'll talk about that in another video but this is basically how you calculate the amount of energy that you would get from one glucose molecule hope that was helpful thanks for watching